also um, a number of years ago, maybe around 2005 or six, we did a further round of improvements on the drying templates and made some additional templates available that, for example, modeled the downstream system in more detail. So the condensation of the evaporated solvent and then the characteristics of the vacuum pump um, so that you can really build more like a flow sheet of the drying operation and um, you know, input the pump characteristics and then the model will tell you what that pump would do under those circumstances and how that would impact the whole system. Again, there's quite a lot of detail to um, to go through in, in talking through this, but the general idea is that you start with a wet bed of solid particles and um, whether you're agitating or not, there is a kind of a, a stagnant period uh, in Schlunder's approach. So if you're agitating, it's a conceptual stagnant period. Uh, if you're not agitating, it's a real stagnant period. And during that period, a kind of a drying front moves through the, the cake and all the particles, you know, in this case on the underside of the front because we're heating the bottom surface, uh, are dry and all the particles above this kind of sharp front are wet, uh, fully fully saturated in fact. Uh, so then after that period of stagnance um, there is an agitation period which to a certain degree mixes on a macro scale the wet bed and the dry bed and then another either real or conceptual stagnant period begins and the front moves usually further into the bed. So you have this, uh, in a stagnant situation, you have this wet bed in the center. In an agitated scenario, it would be more distributed throughout the the, um, the cake. But effectively, that's really what the Schlunder model is doing, is allowing you to have a kind of a drying front, and then you know properly taking into account the physics of how that moves as the drying proceeds. Uh, in the last couple of years, there have been a few good reviews of the state of the art. Uh, most of them strongly feature the Schlunder model. And there's also been some uh, examples where people have built more like computational fluid dynamics models of vacuum contact drying. Um, so when you when you either take that kind of distributed parameter approach um, or when you take the Schlunder type approach, you need a lot of the same kind of information. And I have a list there taken from, taken from Marcello Moru's paper just showing uh, the parameters required in order to model their system. And there's really a lot of overlap between these and what we need. Um, and unfortunately, it's true to say, in most cases, you will need to fit something in order to predict drying. Um, I think it would be very fortunate to be able to predict you know, a real API or intermediate drying profile without doing some appropriate experiments to understand certainly that the properties of the, the particulate system. They utilize some lab data in this case. Um, the lab measurements would be the kind of navy blue um, diamonds, I suppose, uh, to calibrate their model, so to fit the unknown parameters. And then they took that model and applied it to different pressures and temperatures. I just want to see the models for drying, for example. And that will then just boil down the list to the ones that are relevant to your particular case. Uh, and similarly with utilities, you can do the same kind of searches. Likewise with publications, you could look for drying and there you'll find the Abbott link. Uh, and under training, in about a week's time, under drying, you will find the new Dynachem drying training exercises. In the Schlunder model, a lot of attention is focused on how well the wall is in contact with the first layer of solid particles and um, how good the heat transfer from the solid wall to that first layer of solid particles can be. So he explicitly and we explicitly break out that heat transfer resistance to the first layer as a separate resistance, almost like the lining on your vessel. It's a separate, an entirely separate resistance, but its behavior is dependent upon the type of particles you're working with and also factors like your solvent system. So you get a picture of the the lab dryer, you also get a picture of a potential other dryer. So always comparing two pieces of equipment uh, in the same view. You input the values in the white cells. So for example, you'll notice impeller speed is zero here. That's unagitated clearly. 
but uh, a new feature of this utility from today is that you can also have agitated conditions in the utility uh, but it must be steady agitation not intermittent for intermittent you need the dynamic model um, you also input numbers like the pressure that um, you know you're planning to run at jack temperature um, basic information about you know where you're trying to get to in terms of target moisture content how much solids are in the dryer to begin with what do you know about their properties again here you know there are some numbers I think that are potentially quite difficult to estimate um, a ballpark particle size is also an input to the Schlunder model identify your solvents so again here like in most Dynachem utilities you have a drop down menu of solvents so that's where the Antoine coefficients and, and all of that would come into this calculation and it also likes you to say how much moisture is initially present in the system and from those inputs then it calculates some initial useful outputs things like the bulk density of your bed um, easy stuff like the initial LOD but then ultimately it also makes an estimate of your drying time so you can see here that I'm getting about five and a half hours for uh, a particular case in the Muru paper with uh, one propanol as the solvent in unagitated conditions and on the right hand side in a bigger dryer I'm getting hundreds of hours under unagitated conditions so there are some numbers here that are useful to take forward into the dynamic model if you choose to make a dynamic model um, just to give you a flavor for the behavior so currently this graph at the top of my screen is showing um, the drying moisture content profiles in the lab and the plant so the lab dryer on the left has got a drying time of a couple of hours and the plant dryer is nearly 400 hours but if I change this even to 5 rpm 5 revs per minute in the plant dryer then it will take the plant drying time down very considerably 